again on another great adventure to Scotland. Get ready for sensory overload as we taste our way across the highlands. From high tea in Edinburgh to haggis in a Scottish pub. In this episode of Taste of Europe. Scotland, famous for Braveheart, Outlander, and Highlander. Kilts, bagpipes, and good, good food. food. <laughs> yes, it's true. Although famous for haggis and fish and chips, there really is a wonderful variety of delicious food in Scotland. Come along on our journey from the lowlands to the highlands and discover the beauty of its breathtaking lands. And its history, culture, and yes, its food. When in Edinburgh, try Mum's Great Comfort Food. It's a really highly rated casual lunch place, and it's just south off the Royal Mile. It serves traditional hearty British food with gourmet sausages, served up in a bright retro-style diner. A steak and ale pie. Judy's having shepherd's pie. Can I take a picture of yours? And there's and like a pastry pie. shell, and there's a potato in there, and there's mashed potato and, and lamb. Some lamb. lamb. You cannot go to the UK without splurging on a high tea. In Edinburgh, we recommend a place called the Dome. It's right near the tourist area near the Royal Mile. At this particular tea room, it is very elegant. Um, you go ahead and you usually have a beautiful table set with fine china. Um, you get your own teapot of your choice of tea. Um, when they bring out the food, it's usually in three tiers. And on your bottom plate, you have your finger sandwiches. The middle plate, you have your scones with clotted cream, butter, or jam. And at the very top, you have all your dessert little cakes. Now, if you're in Glasgow, we recommend the Willow Tea Room, designed by renowned architect and artist Charles McIntosh. For all these uh, tea rooms, you do need to make reservations and check your total cost ahead of time to make sure it fits your budget. And for you caffeine lovers, there's plenty of great coffee all across Scotland. The only problem I found is that most places don't open till 8.30 or 9 a.m. Yeah. They had their cappuccinos down packed. Absolutely delicious. And another thing they do is they always sprinkle cocoa on top of the cappuccino. When in Scotland, you should definitely drop into a local pub. And Guilford Arms is a fine one in Edinburgh. Typical pub foods include steak and ale pie, bangers and mash, shepherd's pie, and the infamous haggis. When in Scotland, you have to try haggis, so I'm going to give it a go. Oatmeal-like texture. It's really good. It's good. I like it. It's not bad at all. I'm going to start out with some fish chowder here at the Guilford uh, Pub. There's 
all different chowders. Chowder, everybody thinks of clam chowder, but there's all types of chowders that were made all across the world. They had the same cream type base with potatoes typically, but New Englanders had clams. They put clams in there. In the South U.S., they put uh, catfish in there. In Scotland, they have fish. They put fish. I definitely had to try the beef in Scotland because I heard so much great stuff about their beef. Um, their cattle there is grass-fed and the Aberdeen Angus beef is definitely some of the best meat in the world. While in Glasgow, hit up the Oxen Finch. It's a trendy, high-ceiling venue with a casual vibe offering creative, contemporary, tapas-style dishes. Okay, so we're at Oxen Finch. Judy's trying Spetzel. But this is a special Spetzel because it's Spetzel with crab. And shrimp. What do you think, Eddie? Very good. The flavors are great. They're delicious. Okay, go ahead. Okay, this is uh, skate. Skate is a really popular flounder type fish that's common in Scotland. Oh, and don't forget about the cultural experience in Scotland like the National Museum of Scotland, the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery. As well as historical sites like Bonnockburn, Culloden, and the Cranog Center, and the many castles and palaces you hear about in Scotland. this university in the UK. Absolutely beautiful. Highly rated in Glasgow and on the critics list is Two Fat Ladies at the Buttery, an old school dark wooden tartan decorated spot for creative upscale Scottish menu, mostly serving seafood. You can't go to Scotland without trying their fish and chips. And usually in every restaurant you have two choices of fish and chips. You can get it in the traditional cod or haddock. Both are absolutely delicious. Here we are at Fingal's Cave on the island of Stapa. It can be a little tricky to find a good restaurant on the island of Skye, but in Dunvegan you can find the Old Schoolhouse Restaurant. It's a family-run restaurant in the former village schoolhouse, offering modern Scottish cuisine. Okay, 
So Judy's trying lamb shank. There's a lot of sheep and lamb uh, across, uh, across Scotland. Oh wow, look at this. It just falls off the bone. Very tender, huh? Yeah, very. Let me see how it is. Super moist and uh, very tender, very juicy. Delicious. Okay. I ordered the uh, Scottish uh, beef cheeks. Beef and lamb are very, very popular here in Scotland. And of course, I have a great history throughout my videos of trying pork cheeks, beef cheeks. It's one of my favorite dishes. So we're going to give it a go here. Mm, delicious. Very tender. You can tell it's been marinated all day. It's just a wonderful dish. Whenever you can, try Scottish beef cheeks, pork cheeks. Delicious. When you're in Inverness, stop by the famous Houdinani uh, pub. It's a bright, high-ceiling pub with live, traditional Scottish folk music. Black Isle Heather Honey. It's really good. Yeah, I guess meatballs. Inverness, we went to the Mustard Seed Restaurant. It's a very modern restaurant. It had a split level setting and it's also was built in a former church as a wood burner. So everything's cooked over the wood burner and the menu is very selective with regional foods in the area. We're at the Mustard Seed here in Inverness. Now, people say you can't get good food in Scotland. That's not completely true. This restaurant takes great pride in having locally sourced vegetables and beef and seafood, and they take great pride in that. And you can get really good locally sourced food if you pick the right restaurant. Butternut squash and sweet potato soup. How is it? Very good. And then I'm starting with some fried brie cheese. Again, all locally sourced. Yeah. Okay, so you got Scottish filet. So the beef in Scotland is a little different than America. How is that? Scottish steak and ale pie. Of course, their version here is a, is a Scottish traditional dish uh, with a little bit of a European take on it. You can see a nice beef under that flaky crust there. In Pitt Lockery, we went to Victoria's restaurant twice in one day. We went for lunch and then we went back for dinner just because their food was awesome. It's brie and cranberry, and fried brie and cheese, dip it in the little cranberry. Got some crispy duck egg rolls here. There's a mountain of sea bass. Judy's got some beautiful looking salmon there. We're both having banafi pie. Banafi pie has a crust, then a toffee layer, then bananas, and homemade cream. 
Of course, no trip to Scotland would be complete without a distillery tour. Single malt scotch is made by malt and barley with peat smoke. Some of the finest single malt scotch whiskey is produced in a modern but traditional manner at Edradour Distillery. They have been producing whiskey in Perthshire since 1825. My personal favorite there is their cream liqueur. It's more of a dessert whiskey, um, and you can even put it on top of ice cream. Overall, the food in Scotland was actually excellent. And one thing we did fail to mention at the beginning that all the restaurants that we went to, you do need reservations for sure. Okay, so we are at castle number nine to top off our wonderful trip to Scotland. How would you kind of describe the trip to you? Uh, <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, the pictures will not do justice for this trip. Just beautiful, open, crisp, clean air. Um, Everywhere, so picturesque and people, green. And yeah, the people are amazing, very, very friendly. Yep. So and I was surprised by the food. The food is actually very, very good here. It's better if you, if you look, it's better than you think. Yes. For a Taste of Europe, Jim and Judy Butler signing off. Cheers. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed this latest video. Thanks for watching, and there's more travel and history videos at Dark Sarcasms video diaries. Please share and subscribe.